Documentaries can inform, inspire, provoke, and bring about social change. But with the rise of the internet, mobile devices, and social media, we're in the midst of a revolution in how documentaries are produced and distributed to the next generation. For more, let's welcome Tim Frakes, an award-winning videographer and video producer who served as principal videographer for the Evangelical Lutheran Church. And we welcome a talented new voice in documentary production, Leah Kitchler is a senior at Lincoln Park High School. Her most recent video, Let's Talk About Water, was the winner of the Young Filmmakers Contest at the One Earth Film Festival. Perhaps could you, it might be best if you just tell us how you got into filmmaking. Every year we were assigned the History Fair uh, presentations in our history classes and we had a documentary option and it's always the one that I um, was most interested in and eventually I started realizing that people were interested in my documentaries as well and uh, freshman year my documentary got great recognition nationally and I realized maybe this is something I should look into. Tim, you've been doing this for a long time. How, when did it start for you? I was a busboy in a restaurant oh. and my, my mother saw an ad in the local newspaper. They were looking for a bindery boy and uh, you know sweeping floors at a newspaper so I got a job and I became fascinated with the electronic media and and with the concept that you could you could write a story and then distribute it to a wide audience and so I went to college and enrolled in journalism school and they required spelling so I moved to radio and from radio I went on to television and the rest is um, is history. How is your faith kind of informed what you choose to do and not do? The work I do is almost all faith-based. But my work as a documentary filmmaker is a vocational calling. Mm -hmm. To me, it is holy work. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the, uh, somebody that influenced me um, Martin Luther, the, the 16th century reformer, you know, said that it, it, uh, you don't have to be a, a priest or a, or a bishop, but that if you're a butcher or a baker or a candlestick maker, that's holy work. Right. So I see telling stories as a holy calling. Mm -hmm. You all get a chance to share stories that from places around the world where we may never get to go. You get to bring cultures through our TV and onto the screen onto our computer screen, which brings up sort of a, a new kind of medium or way of getting across movies now. It used to be that if you wanted to get a film scene, it, you had to go to the movie theater. You know, now there's an entirely new distribution system where somebody with a camera and, and a software program can make a movie happen. And, and so, Tim, I'll ask you first, do you think that this is a positive or a negative thing that now it, it's opened up the market so much? Leah, when I, when I started in this business, you had to have a transmitter, you know, and I worked at a TV station here in Chicago, and that was it. You had, and if you produced something, you had the transmitter and it broadcast the signal out. Today, the game is so profoundly changed. There's no excuse for not going out and telling stories because you can distribute, not to, not to a mass audience the way you can with broadcasting, but you can, you can tell stories to a specific audience. You can have a more profound impact on a specific group of individuals and target them spot on with social media. Man, there's just not a downside to it. Yeah. It, it. It is absolutely freeing because now we can take these digital tools and just go to town. Before you had to have a crew and you had to have a budget and um, you had to go out and you know raise all kinds of funds. Now you can have a laptop and a, and a DSLR camera, buy them off of eBay and you're good to go. <laughs> People can now put up uh, with their camera phone or something a six second video, you know, Vine is popular and other kinds of outlets like that. Leah, I wonder what you think about those because you still use a more traditional filmmaking style, but you have the option of doing the six second style. Why do you choose, what do you think about those? I mean, I think it's awesome because for me and most of my friends, we almost never go to the movie theaters and it's not because we, I mean, we're definitely exposed to video and different movies, but it's in a completely different way and I'm so excited about all of these new forms of communication. I just watched your water documentary. Bam, 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 bam. If it doesn't move that fast and you're creating content, you can forget anybody under 30 watching it. If a video is over eight minutes, I'm not 
going to You're not click watching on it. it at all. And it's, I don't know, some people would think of it as horrible and, and impatient. It's so mean. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, people want information quickly, so. Right, yeah. right. No, so it's, it's changing the game completely. Um, what, what are some of your favorite works that you've done? I think the water video is something that was really cool for me because I was using people that were my age and younger mm -hmm. and I was introducing new information to them but it also the entire video was focused towards not only adults that would be more affected by these water issues or more aware of them but kids my age so I think that communication through youth at this point in my life is really mm -hmm. awesome. More than a bath. Um, if that's 50, then this is probably like 70 gallons. 65. So it's less. 25. Exactly. Yes! Yeah. Tim, is there a favorite piece of yours? Um, I shared with our producer, Eric, uh, a piece. We were in Haiti right after the earthquake, and we did a we followed a, a non-governmental organization that was doing a, a food distribution. And they made some tactical errors in how they set up the distribution so they didn't have an exit <laughs> strategy. <laughs> and a mob formed yeah. and it turned into a riot. We never did anything with that piece. Mm. It's compelling footage, but Nothing you know. Happened. No, I, I hate it because I thought, you know what, because there's no way I can explain in a video that these people hadn't had any access to clean drinking water and food in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And they were desperate and there was supplies for 200 people and there was about 2,000 in the mob. What a lot of people don't know is that it takes a discerning eye, not only behind the lens, but also a discerning heart, you know, to know about what kind of films we need to be seeing right now as a people. And to be able to, to use wisdom in your filmmaking, uh, this is certainly ministry and can be even prophetic, you know, to introduce to your friends something about water, <laughs> you know, that they're not thinking about or, or the other pieces, the many pieces that you've done, Tim. So, so what are you all working on now? What, what can we look forward to from you all in the future? So I'm working on a couple projects. I have been asked to create a video for the program at my school to present to new incoming students. So that's also oh, really exciting because okay. I'm able to show my school to people that hopefully will be living through it for the next four years of their life. And then I'm also uh, collaborating with Stephen Ordauer, who's also a Chicago filmmaker, um, and he's creating a documentary featuring the Interfaith Sunday School oh, that nice. I was with. So, Very yeah. nice. Looking forward to that. Uh, I'm producing a documentary right now for a Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministry Sanctuary on, um, on civil rights and where we go next. Um, and, uh, and then I'm also just finishing up a documentary for the Institute for the Study of American Evangelicals on the Billy Graham Crusades. Mm. So uh, we're, we're looking at the Crusades from uh, 1949 to 1995. It's a historical piece. Right, right. Tim, is there any advice that you would give to new promising filmmakers, Leia and others, who have a camera, have a passion? Everybody feels like a filmmaker nowadays and are wanting to know what they can do next. What advice would you give? Leah, how long have you been doing this? I mean, since I was like eight. Eight. So, and now you're? Seventeen. Okay, so less than a decade. Yeah. You're living proof that you can learn the technology quickly. So what I always tell students is that learning the technology is irrelevant. Get an education. You need to understand the difference between macro and microeconomics. You need to understand the broader, the broader foundational issues that, that make a story. I can teach you how to run a camera. I can teach you the latest software. You, I could probably teach you in an hour or two. <laughs> you know, you can learn all those techniques. What you can't learn quickly is, is to be educated. Go out and get a good education, then make films if you want to. Well, thank you, Tim and Leia, for sharing your work and your insight, your creativity and your passion is so clear to us. I'm Julian DeShazier for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith. <laughs>